Kwana, thanks for being with us today. Uh, Dave, thanks. It's really good to be here again. Cancer Genetics is a leader in enabling precision medicine from bench to bedside in oncology. Explain to us your business model. What do you actually do? God, very good question. What we do is we get patient samples from healthcare centers and community hospitals now all around the world that come to our lab to help them determine what type of cancer their patients have, and then we also determine what kind of therapy is good for them. That's about a third of our business today. But two thirds of our business is we're helping big biotech and pharma companies globally, helping them develop new tests that will help their drugs get to market faster, or we're helping them with their clinical trials where we're providing all the genomic and biomarker testing to help stratify patients and help determine the effectiveness of that drug. Today, we're working with eight out of the top 10 and nearly 16 out of the top 20 biotech and pharma companies around the world. And that's about two thirds of our revenue. And the other third, we're working now with close to 300 plus hospital and healthcare systems, mostly throughout the United States, enabling them to treat their patients better, faster, and cheaper. So, Pana, tell us, how do you use uh, oncology biomarkers and molecular testing? The way that we use them is very similar to how the rest of the industry is beginning to adopt. One of the most exciting areas is the use of the biomarkers to help determine if a patient is going to respond to a therapy. PDL1 has been a phenomenal success. Companies like Merck, Bristol Myers Squibb, um, Roche, and many others. And in fact, we do a lot of the testing for Merck. We're a national reference laboratory for them. And the PDL1 status, which is a biomarker, helps determine whether that person is going to be highly responsive to a new class of amino oncology drugs. And that's one of dozens of new markers that we are discovering in amino oncology. On the side of genomic markers, there are markers like NTRAC, KRAS, EGFR, all of which are changing precision medicine in lung cancer. Lung cancer now has gone from being one or two types to now there are over 20 different types of lung cancers. And many of them are responsive to a certain drug, such as crizotinib or some of the newer drugs, such as Tegresa. And that changes the potential outcome for the patient, but also at the same time, and remarkably, reduces healthcare cost. So those diagnoses at the patient level happen earlier and reduce costs, but also they come out of years of trials. And that's Cancer Genetics' unique business model, is that we're involved in the, sometimes the discovery of these markers. We're involved in developing the actual test for our biotech and pharma partners. We manage the testing and manage the outcomes of the testing during a one year, two year, or three year trial. And then we are often tasked with bringing that test into the clinical setting. So our model is very unique in that we go from bench to bedside. We're not purely just a testing lab. We're not purely just a clinical trial provider, but we actually, because of our heritage and innovation, we help companies discover and develop these new tests, bring them into the clinical trials, and eventually shepherd them into day-to-day -day patient care. And that end-to-end -end model is really fundamentally durable. Pilot, revenue was up 50% in 2016 to over 27 million. Your gross profit was up 150% over 2015. What do you attribute this uh, success to? Oh, first of all, Dave, the, the market opportunity out there is huge. It's in the billions of dollars in terms of the impact that we can be making in cancer care. Um, we've been responsible now for over 125 clinical studies and trials that go through our labs. As we increase the number of studies, our revenue increases. But also very importantly, as we increase our impact on patients, we're impacting more patients today than we had in any prior year period. And that allows us to change these patients' lives, get them onto the right therapies. So really, ultimately, volume drives our revenue growth. And at the same time, very importantly, we grew our revenue 50% from 18 to 27 million. Uh, but at the same time, we grew our margins, as you pointed out, pretty remarkably. And that's really drew to our people and our processes. And that's one thing I'm very proud of. On the $9 million in revenue growth, we actually generated $6 million in margin expansion. So that incremental revenue drew 66% new net gross profit margin. So that's a pretty big number, and I think we will continue to show how that scales. And that's very unique for a company both our size in our industry, that kind of significant margin expansion. And so you know, our long-term business model has our margins in the high 50s to 60s, and we think we're well on our way there. Our margin during Q4 
was about 41%, which was up significantly over about 13% the same time last year. So again, you know, our fundamentals drive margin expansion, but that drive in margin expansion is driven by top line growth, uh, which we expect to continue to be in the high, high double digits, and then ultimately in the volume of testing and the volume of clinical trials that we're touching. Pana, talk to us about your collaborations. You have a number of what we would call world-class collaborations, including the Mayo Clinic, uh, Sloan Memorial Kettering Cancer Center, and many others. What's the importance of these collaborations, and how do they fit in your overall strategy? Our collaborations are very critical to our long-term durability because we believe that gives us access to new innovations coming out in the clinic, coming out in research. Genomic medicine or precision medicine, it, it's not static. It changes constantly. Um, and we can't be experts in every type of cancer. So we look for partners, collaborators. They're going to tell us the new things that are relevant to help manage patients. And that's going to come from outside our four walls. We're very proud of our 20-plus collaborations that constantly give us new content. And that's very important for shareholders on two fronts. One, it reduces our R&D costs, makes us more efficient by allowing us to access all the tremendous resources globally. But second, and this is very important, these collaborations actually drive market share and revenue. And the way they do that, we've been very successful as we develop new technology. Biotech and pharma companies want that technology in a commercial company, in a commercial lab where they can access it, understand the QA behind it, understand how to scale it up for a large trial or a large um, initiative they have. And so collaboration, it, we're really taking in open innovation, get content faster, cheaper, better, and get better use for our shareholders. But at the second time, which is critical, allow that to get access in the commercial world and drive revenue. Many of our new collaborations have driven revenue within a, a quarter or two, and we're very proud of that because the researchers themselves, they want these breakthrough technologies to hit the clinic faster, to be used faster. A great example is our recent collaboration in kidney cancer. Cleveland Clinic, Huntsman Cancer Center, City of Hope, Sloan Kettering, multiple collaborators, and eventually, one of the biggest pharma companies globally saw one of our collaborations and actually wanted to use it in a clinical trial and we landed a very large contract as a result of that. Another collaboration was with a global pharma company, global healthcare company, and they saw the cutting edge work we were doing in lymphoid and myeloid cancers with many of our collaborators, and they wanted access to early insight to that data. And so again, that led to a large seven-figure revenue deal with them. So that you can see these collaborations for our shareholders were doing a good thing by getting access to content and realizing that we can't be the best at everything. And so that open innovation framework is breakthrough. And on the other side, we're using those breakthroughs to drive near-term revenue. Pana analysts covering, major small cap biotech analysts covering your company have targets anywhere from five and a quarter up to over $6. What's the essential value proposition for investors today? Why should they own your stock? I think we, unfortunately, Dave, we continue to be highly undervalued versus our peers and versus what we're doing. We think it's a great value play. But on top of that, we continue to demonstrate strong, high double-digit year-over-year growth, very good expense control, near-term visibility to profitability, and we've got a portfolio of patents and collaborations that I think are world-class. So I think we're a leader, and more importantly, a durable leader in precision oncology. And so I think we're highly undervalued and would make long-term upside for most investors. Pan, it's a great story. Thanks for being with us today. Dave, thanks.